Three, two, one, go. We should be live. This is something we often say on our daily Twitter spaces, but we do it live around here. Except we, do it live. we don't we don't usually for Zero Pod. So this is the first time we'll ever have uh, sort of live streamed our interview for a, a Zero Rights Reserve podcast. So if it's all right with you guys, I'm just going to do a quick intro that we'll use for the podcast and also will be helpful for anyone tuning in live. And then we'll jump right into some questions and get to know you guys. Awesome. Perfect. Awesome. Welcome back to Zero Rights Reserved, a podcast about nouns, DAOs, Ethereum, NFTs, and more. I'm your host, Tony Hawk. My co-host is Prof Werder, aka the Nounish Professor. And today we're trying something a little bit different as we stream our podcast interview live on Unlonely. What is Unlonely, you ask? Well, we just so happen to have Grace and Brian Guan, co-founders of the platform, here today to talk to us about it on our first ever live Zero Pod. Welcome, Grace and Brian. Hi. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you guys. So excited. This is so exciting. GM, Bringing together GM. all my worlds. <laughs> true, true, true. Well, you just you need someone from BuilderDAO here in order to fully you know make it full circle. True. But we'll take true. what we can get. All right. Very so uh, as we often say around these parts, uh, nouns is all about people, places, and things. Uh, but we like to concentrate on people first. So we'd love to hear a little bit about your. Uh, individual histories and how you guys each ended up in the on-chain space. Uh, Grace, you were on-chain before I was. I was on-chain. There you go. Really? Order, right. order of operations. I am, I'm the older sister, so it only makes sense that I would guide him on-chain, right? <laughs> um, yes. My, Good. My but also that means you get blamed for everything, right? Oh, that yeah. I get blamed for absolutely so everything. I'm held <laughs> responsible for everything. I'm like, Part sister, Takes all the credit founder, part parent. Like I've I've had to play all the roles. Oh 100%. <laughs> How many years are between you guys? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, actually, like four years. Yeah. So four years. Enough time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So do you do you do you find? Oh, go ahead. Grace, do you find that he gets a? Do you find that he gets away with so much stuff with your parents that you never got away with? Because oh, that million. was my experience as an older I'm child. A million trillion. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot to unpack with the sibling dynamic, which we're happy to dive further into at another point. <laughs> That's a whole well, separate conversation. <laughs> well, luckily, I, I think of Toady as the other brother that I never had, you know, brother from another mother. Um, so it's I, I have a similar dynamic, funny enough. <laughs> what do I get away with that you don't? <laughs> yeah, so like, what the fuck? Like, check that one. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Is that a curse on this podcast? Just uh, no, this is a family show. Yes, you can curse. Oh, it's, sure. it's actually, it's actually recommended. We have a quota uh, for every oh, fifteen yeah. minute section. It has to be met. It's a number of curse words. Yeah. Great. Okay. That's right. Try to throw in as many possible. It used to be, air, right, used to be air horns. Now it's curse words. There we go. All right, let's fucking go. Quota. <laughs> let's fucking go. Let's, let's fucking let's, go. Uh, sorry. Okay. So back, we, back to. I, I knew Bible. this was going to go off the rails a little bit. It's all good though. <laughs> so, yeah, did you you so how did you end up on? How did you find yourself on chain and and to this craziness yes. and to this web three yes, craziness? Yes, yes. Um, TLDR. I was a big tech corporate girly. Was at Google, YouTube for five years. Got really bored. Um, <laughs> exactly this emoji. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> was like need to spice some things up in my life need to get like out of the bay area surround myself with more like open-minded curious interesting people like motivating people uh and somehow that was crypto that was really really unintended um but like i had a friend who since college had been talking my ear off about getting paid for his internships in bitcoin in 2014 2013 um, transferred me my first sum of Ethereum, ended up being one of our first investors. So really pivotal. Oh, this is Dylan? This is Dylan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dylan Chen. Hey, shout, out. Shout, out. <laughs> shout out. Shout out, Dylan. <laughs> shout out to Dylan. Uh, from there, um, there was kind of an idea in the back of my mind, like a problem that I wanted to solve, but I was like, this is way too big of a problem to solve. And that was basically all the problems that I saw while working at YouTube with creators, with users, and kind of the totally unbalanced incentives. So like creators, you know, have spent decades of their life pouring their life's work and basically into building a presence, building an audience and community on these platforms. And then are always living in the fear of like any day the algorithm can change. I'm like chasing the algorithm, chasing relevance. 
any day content policies and monetization policies, and I could be demonetized, shadow banned, have my channel completely deleted, all of these fears that you just exist in when that is, that's your life and kind of the source of main source of your income. And then on top of that, obviously like 50% of your revenue that's generated through ads gone disappears as soon as you involve a platform. Oh my God, tofu cameo. We love tofu. Hey. Hey. <laughs> love it. <laughs> He's, like, He's like, oh, go away with you. <laughs> oh <my God>. yeah. <laughs> the uh, cat, cats and internet, you know. They go together. You know, you, you know when you're like complimenting someone, they're like, "Stop, <laughs> stop, <laughs> don't stop." Too mean. Oh, uh, you ever try to kiss a girl and they're like, "Ew." <laughs> or yeah, either. Why not both? Why not both? Well, so that's, like that's really scary. interesting. We can relate a lot to this, obviously, Grace, as content creators yeah. ourselves, and then you know, building our building our community at the Noun Square, building up this podcast at Zero Pod. And it's, it is tricky. Like, in fact, right now, as we speak, we are currently search banned on Twitter X and we have no idea why, and yeah. we can't get an answer. We can't get an answer from anybody. And like, luckily yeah. our community is pretty tight knit, so it hasn't like hurt us too much, but like, it's just a reminder that like, you don't own any of this shit that you're building yeah. on these centralized platforms. Yeah. A hundred percent. So yeah, that kind of pivots into where Brian got involved. I'll, I'll let you get into it. So Grace worked at common protocol for a little bit and intro me to this guy named Avi. That was the first Web3 social company that I worked at. There was this thing called Men Protocol. I don't know what they're doing right now. I think they just raised a ton of money in the bull market and haven't launched anything. Um, I hope, you know, they figure out something soon. I don't have any- uh, Many, many such cases. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. sounds no, familiar. No bad blood from them. Um, I did try to take uh, my co-founder's job in the first month that I worked there. So just to give you an idea of my the, how difficult I am to manage uh, as a as a non founder CEO person. He was uh, he was born to not be managed. That's the lesson here. <laughs> uh, I have I have issues with authority. Uh, authority. <laughs> you that's know, it. I think that's a common theme in uh, for founders. Very common theme. Yeah. yeah. True. Um, so uh, I worked there for a few months. Uh, we moved to the Bay Area. Hated it, then it got fired because I was, you know, I, I don't blame them, you know. I was just like, <laughs> I was just like, hey, like this guy doesn't code. Hey, let me have his job, and then uh, I got fired. Uh, but then I immediately started working on my own projects. Um, I worked on, uh, I built like this like Reddit tokenized tokenized Reddit thing called Pravna. First thing I built, just kind of built it, no users, just put it out there. Um, then I went through a few iterations, and then we finally came to a lonely. Which, funny enough, first iteration of Unlonely was just a decentralized YouTube watch party. Yeah. It was basically, like I would just like I would just have a live stream every day at six p.m. and it would just be live streaming YouTube videos, and people in the chat could suggest could, like and queue up what YouTube videos. videos. Oh, that's yep. funny. Yeah. That's pretty fun. That's right. That's fun. It's a nice little bit. It's like a vampire attack kind of thing. In an interesting it is way. kind of it was basically just like watching videos by yourself is lonely. Let's try to like, watch, like I think it's better. It's more fun to watch things together. Um, then uh, I realized pretty quickly that like people were just here to like hang out synchronously, like live, and like didn't actually care about the videos they were watching. So then I just started like streaming myself and like talking shit. Um, fast forward like another six months, I've been live streaming almost every day. Uh, launched a Prime token. I uh, didn't really know what like what I was doing with that. I literally just like launched it and was like, "Here's the price. Send me ETH if you want the Brian token." And a lot of people bought it because it like did this cool feature where if you paid five Brian, you could like have a video play over my stream and just like, interrupt whatever I was saying. So um, what you're saying <laughs> is uh, you walked so that Ben .eth could run. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> That's actually exactly what I was saying. Very very, very astute observation, sir. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so it's been a super iterative process. Um, I think, uh, you know, it's been a grind for sure. Um, I think like, you know, the first six to eight months, not a lot of traction, not a lot of growth, not super clear idea product wise. And also like fundraising was pretty hard. I mean, um, yeah. Now we're in a pretty good place. A consumer product in like the depths of the bear market. And 
Depths of yeah. the bear market, and this is also before Grace was like fully convinced. Um, oh, yeah. She was, was like, you I was know. doing my MBA. I was doing my MBA, and I just graduated. I graduated in July, so there uh, there were other things going on in my life. Congra oh, congratulations! You're, like fresh. you're really yeah. fresh MBA. Wow. Okay. Cool. I know. I know. Congratulations. congratulations. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. No, Thank we you. don't congratulate her for it. It was. It was <laughs> oh, a lot. Oh, sorry. Of uh, <laughs> apologies. Then does that work? So condolences condolences i think is the right word <laughs> best wishes yes you came into the business after you finished your mba is that how it or or were you still in school so what happened i guess timeline wise i think we really like we launched an mvp of unlonely or brian built this like very very early scrappy version of unlonely like summer 2022 I think it was like July around then. And so I was one year into my MBA then. I spent the summer working with him. We really had no idea what the fuck we were doing, but we were like, okay, let's like try to see if we can put together a business plan, you know, like have a pitch deck, see if investors are interested in this, try to get users. That was also the same time that we got onto Farcaster. So, and then that I think also yeah. took us down our kind of initial journey of like first users, early adopters, go to market was all very Farcaster heavy and like forever have so much love for the Farcaster world for honestly jumping on board and being willing to, willing to use like a really, really shitty product at the beginning. Um, and I've been working since well, that... then like, in some capacity, like just kind of juggling school other career stuff and then unlonely and now since july i've been full-time with unlonely yeah awesome. so that leads directly into a question we had up here to ask which was what is the farcaster connection because i know there's a strong tie between the farcaster community and unlonely what can you unpack that a little bit um we have badges for farcaster users that's pretty much the extent to how we're connected to farcaster i, I, I would say wise, like it was it's just community wise product. yeah yeah community right. wise we size because that's how we got like our first let's call it like 100 users for like all from podcaster shadow podcaster um i think now we are starting to venture out uh, outside of forecaster a little bit um i just like don't want to be dependent on another web3 social company uh product success i think forecast yeah. is more builder heavy it's a little bit more uh serious i think there's like more like dads honestly on using podcaster more like older people uh, crypto dads yeah crypto dads. guilty yeah. guilty <laughs> um and so we're, we're, we're the, our recent like love on leverage show was like, us trying to like access like the twitter more dj and like just like viral dumb shit like reality tv uh, stuff not, not by, by the way there, there is a large middle to that by that venn diagram i will say but i, I get what you're saying I agree. I just think um, we, we, we wanted to expand past the podcaster. And so Makes we sense, yeah. to Lens, and then now we're uh, hitting Twitter pretty hard. Um, but yeah, that's like the extent to which we're really like, um, there's nothing like intensely, that we're, we're not like a, I wouldn't consider ourselves like a podcaster client. Um, I love podcaster though, like Dan's an investor, Dan's a homie. Um, nice. But uh, that's like sort of the extent. To which we're it's been really interesting to see different um, Web3 businesses sort of pop up or even non-Web3 pop up within uh, the Farcaster ecosystem and seeing how they support each other and having those founders who can support each other as well as investor support. There's a whole bunch of layers to opportunity within this particular little ecosystem. And I've definitely seen, you know, it made a lot of sense to me when I was thinking about um, doing like some kind of streaming about farcaster obviously it was going to be on on lonely because it's the only thing that made sense yeah. um it, because of that connection because we know that that's that they're you know going to be the audience and it just made a lot of sense for it but also i can totally understand like you can't just be it's still small it's still too small to be the only audience for sure you know it has yeah. to it has to go broader um i'd love to dig in toady are you ready to dig into love on leverage <laughs> I do want to talk about that, but I was wondering if we could take just a pause to double click on, on Lonely first, just before we get yeah. into some of the fun stuff you guys have been doing. But one thing I don't think we covered yet is just like, why on Lonely? Like, I understand you talked a little bit, Grace, about your experience at YouTube and seeing how people can be demonetized and how they don't own their content. But what does Unlonely do that nobody else is doing right now? Good question. 
Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like uh, I'm uh, you know you're gonna ask me for my TAM and my my how many <laughs> That's right. right. What's your Dude. DAU? God damn, Tony. Um, no, I'm happy to answer. It. Um, I think it's a good question. Don't worry. Think... Don't worry. We'll fix it in post if you, yeah. if you don't have an answer. <laughs> Just like have like an AI version of me uh, talking about it. <laughs> I think the answer to that question has changed. Um, I think it started off very much as like empowering creators um like giving them ac more ownership over how they monetize but i actually like in the past half a year to a year have sort of i think like that's like a lot of just like religious jumbo um i think like the like the ethos of that i agree with and i'm like yes like decentralization um giving power back to users but in terms of like practical like creating like practical product use cases that is not that alone like the but being decentralized and open uh, is not that alone is not enough to make people want to use your product that's what I yeah they just they don't care about it primarily I, is the main fact, like, a lot of people don't care a lot of people don't care and so we've been trying to figure out what really clicks and i think our love on leverage show was like the first time we were experiencing something we're like okay like there's actually a unique a, a new user behavior that we are unlocking here, right? When when people, when when someone was when, when the dates were happening, and you know a guy said something red flaggy and like bad, and people just started dumping their like selling their yeses and buying those, right? That that was like hilarious. That was like cool to witness. Even if you weren't putting money in, it was just cool to see how other people were putting their money in. And if you were putting your money in, it was a fun experience too. Um, it's like you monetized the YouTube comment section, <laughs> right? That's exactly. Uh, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and so uh, that is sort of the direction we're heading in. I'm also like a lot more interested. So like just to level with you guys, right? I think uh, the cool thing about Web3 Social is like, or like Social5 is all of the innovation is happening in how you're monetizing, right? How you're allowing people to put money in and how you're allowing people to take money out. And so with that, I think- Is, is this the, the friend tech effect? Is it be, I think it's yeah. a friend tech effect, but I also like, this is something that I, like we have been working on this prior to friend tech launching. Um, you know, I, I, I think like as a social app, that's how we're going to innovate. Like the decentralization, the openness is not, a, it's not enough. We have to like actually innovate with like the user experience. And so we, we are able to monetize immediately and therefore like actually worry about getting cash flow positive immediately. Whereas like any other web to social company has to go through like 12 rounds of funding and either IPO or get, get acquired. Like that's the only end goal. Um, and I think what I, what friend tech did show us is that like, fuck no, like you can, you can get to cash flow positive, have a small lean team, low burn and just have enough transaction volume. You know, we can get, and, and by the way, VCs are going to notice that too. You know, they're going to say, wait, you know, th these guys did it. You know, maybe we don't have to be cash flow neutral or losing money for 10 years on every single app that gets exactly. Um So, yeah, I think like that, that, like that, that mindset shift has been pretty, pretty helpful for us. Um, you know, we can talk about friends, like, like is friends like over financialized, et cetera, like probably. Right. But for us, like our North star right now is just like increasing like betting volume so that we can, like we, we take a 5% fee. So increasing betting volume so we can hit cash flow positive. And so. What we found is that in order to hit that volume, we could focus a lot on like onboarding a ton of like a ton of streamers and hoping that some of them take off. Or what we could do is focus on us creating these like super viral productionalized shows or like shorter like events, like live events that only last for a few days or a week and like seeing if we can get like a, a, a big enough spike in interest and transaction volume so that we can make cash flow positive. And so that's something we're looking into. Like, I think before it was all about like, we need more streamers, we need more streamers. We need to see, you know, our stream time spent. These are all metrics that we need to see grow. Now it's just simplified to hitting cash flow positive, like, like volume, we need volume. And so whether or not that comes with growing like the amount of channels and how much, how many hours each channel is streaming or just us making these like fun shows that a ton of people show up to like, were either one of those works as long as it hits like that final volume number. So yeah. that's how we're thinking about this. And, 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 sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Grace. 
Yeah, I would just jump in and follow on to that really quickly. Like it's it's a flywheel also. Like what we found from Love and Leverage and that being our yeah. first like produced show is that. that yes, that's a great growth mechanism to get people excited and to kind of put a lot of work into this one show. But then as a result, because yeah. of the expansion of the audience, because now more people have heard of us, that will bring about new streamers who maybe have bigger audiences. They'll start streaming on Unlonely and it kind of continues to grow in each other. That's I would say that's the way that I'm thinking about it now. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's what I was going to say as well. Is like the, because you you attracted so many more new viewers. So then yeah. from that, I am certain that you got some new streamers. So yeah. I think that's a, a really good flow to introducing the platform. And I think it really could end up being the go to for Web three streamers, whether that's gamers in Web three, whether that's whatever, uh, because of that crypto connection and being able to tap into that. Um, I do have a question about uh, one thing. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Can I just say something quick? Yeah, just quickly on that on yeah. that thread before you ask the next question. Uh, I was just going to say it's kind of like a luxury too for crypto native apps to be able to even target that kind of cash flow positivity so early in what you guys are doing because it's like okay. everybody already has a wallet just to sign up, and so that friction is automatically so much lower. Whereas yep. if you guys were doing the same thing as a Web two app and they had to put a credit card in, the bet, right. like forget it. it well, right. first of all, they could. First of all, they couldn't use a credit card to bet anyways. Their credit card would yeah. block the, the charge. So <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. That's true. so it's definitely an unlocked. Crypto users are, are, are a lot more okay with the idea of paying for an improved social online experience. Or DJ, yeah, yeah. I would much rather pay for like Farcaster than yeah. have a zillion ads definitely. that breaks yeah. up my feed. You know, yeah. like yeah. I'll, I'll take that any day of the week. Like yeah. that's, yeah. And I think so. And so here's my question on this. In terms of the legalities, have you investigated <laughs> that regarding betting? Of course, you know, I'm an attorney, so I have to ask this question. Um, <laughs> but I'm not I'm just a attorney. I'm not your attorney. And I'm just curious if you I honestly don't know that there's a clear answer. Um, so yeah. I'm just wondering, you know, it's, I think it's a matter of like, you know, you make your best guess kind of situation. But I don't know if you've looked into that at all and what you're, where you landed on that. Um, we have excellent lawyers who have been <laughs> in crypto for a while and have been part of like major, like new swap, tender leaf, like things of tender mint, things like that. Um, their advice is pretty much like, yeah, you're kind of reaching a gray area, but you're just like too small as you're too small <laughs> for anyone to care. Like the, the Florida gambling commission is not going to come after you anytime soon. Um, and so like, that's why I like them because we're all about just like, iterating quickly. You know, there's like a non-zero chance that like a month from now we've tested, we've like found something new that we want to do and it's completely separate or it's like, you know, maybe it's related to gambling, maybe it's related to something else. Um, but we just want to iterate. I think like if, 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 if we do become the place to gamble on like events happening on live streams, which I think is a very real possibility, like turning any live event into like a gambleable sporting event. If we do go down that direction, I am very confident that we will be able to find ways using the beautiful, uh, the beautiful thing that is Ethereum, that is blockchain and smart contracts and tokens and new types of tokens. I'm sure we'll be able to find a way to create that same experience, but like, you know, kind of like, you know, sneak our way around various laws and things like that. Like, I'm, 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 that's one thing that I'm actually not that worried about. Let's pull it. Let's I would pull actually, it. We've been talking a lot. I would agree with that assessment because <laughs> I think you are so small. It's worth the it's worth the risk for now until you know things get sorted out for sure. It makes a lot of sense yep. to me. Grace, you were going to say something. Oh, no, Grace was speaking as well. Go ahead. I I was just. Uh, I think Brian said sneaking our way around laws, and I was going to say navigating. Um, so yeah, like, navigate. navigating. Okay, okay, we'll fix it. We'll fix it in post. That was navigate. I heard navigating. I definitely didn't hear. Yeah, I heard navigating. At all. I, I never heard, heard the word sneak in this entire live stream. Uh, I was also. I'm, I'm also not sure what, how I got here, and I was probably probably added by a third party. So yeah, just to make that <laughs> also, just to be clear, this is not uh, we're not giving financial advice here. No, and, no, no, really not. Not life advice. Not yeah. legal advice. My uh, usual BYOR. disclaimer is is not financial advice, not legal advice, probably not nothing, a cult. Nothing on unloneliness. We're doing anything with nouns, so there you go. Yeah, nothing. Nothing on unloneliness is security. Nothing is security. So Gary, Correct. if you're watching, Gary, it's you not doing? a security. 
I think that's actually I think that's actually how you summon Gary. So be careful. <laughs> <laughs> it's like like Beetlejuice. Don't say it three times. It's like talking, um, okay. about, well, we talking were... about China and that summons Dan Romero. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Don't I do thought it. you were gonna say. Tr- I thought you were gonna say Trump. It summons oh, Trump. Honestly, talking about probably China. Trump as well. Don't do that either. <laughs> but, no summoning. Okay, we've been talking a lot. We've been talking a lot about the gambling angle, and I feel like maybe we missed a step to uh, yeah. just clarify exactly what what it is that you guys are doing with gambling for people who are watching now, and, and particularly people who maybe aren't watching on Unlonely, because I'm assuming yeah. people that are watching this live stream probably know a lot about Unlonely. Hi, hope you're having fun with the stream. But if you're watching this in a week or so on our podcast and you don't know what Unlonely is, can you explain a little bit how you guys are integrating sort of uh, gamified gambling into the stream? Uh, yeah, so we have two types of bets. Uh, one is what we have out currently, which is live betting, and that's just like binary. So, you know, in the case of Love on Leverage, it was a binary bet that was based on the question, will she want to go on a second date? Um, and so people were, were there, you can buy yeses and you can buy nos, and a pool of money generates from those, from those, like, from those fees. And if you were correct and you bought a yes and she did say yes, then you got to split the money with all the yes people. Um, the next thing that we're adding for the Riz Olympics, which is our next show, which is going to be fun, is like multiplayer. So having like multiple channels, each with this new thing we're introducing called a VIP badge, which gives you access to a secret chat and other features. But additionally, it's like you basically placing your bet that this streamer, this channel is going to be the one who wins yeah. this tournament and so we're we're basically introducing like multiplayer and the cool thing is all the contestants who are competing in this riz olympics which is like a single tournament all of the fees generated from all of those like vip badges all go into one tournament pool which then gets sent to the winner and the holders of the winner so we're trying to in- introduce more liquidity i want people to be, uh, be able to bet more money if they want to that was a complaint that we got on our last feature was Hey, I want to bet more money. And I was like, <laughs> I got you. Uh, basically, the idea is... You're VIP, going to so you have a VIP table? What's up? VIP table, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so basically, it's a VIP badge. You get access to special things, but also it's like a proof. It's like, hey, this is you putting money that you think this person's going to win. Um, so yeah, that's like what we're doing next. Um, I think everything we're doing is still like highly experimental. You know, don't put any money in that you can't afford to lose. Um, we That's try to write in general. Smart good. Smart. Those are good yeah. words for everything. <laughs> I feel like our entire our entire live stream is just a giant disclaimer at this point. <laughs> 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 just a big disclaimer. I got I got in some Twitter beef a few weeks ago about like wanting to ship quickly and maybe and like. Oh, not. we know. Oh, we know. <laughs> we're gonna talk about that. It's an, there's a question about that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, but I'd love to, can you dive into, um, I want to dive a little bit more into Love on Leverage and how did you come up with this concept? And then we have to discuss Grace's um, matchmaking abilities because they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. So how did you come up with this concept and like, and what was the process? And for those who maybe yeah. missed it and didn't know what it was, if you can talk a little bit about what is Love on Leverage and how it came about and, and what happened. I can I can definitely do this Whoever recap. Wants this, to is start. Like, <laughs> this is like the single most fun two weeks of any job I've ever had. Like it was such a I was on oh, such an awesome. adrenaline high. Um, and so love and leverage for those who missed out was you know crypto's reality TV dating show streamed exclusively on Unlonely. <laughs> what happened was we recruited a bunch of willing cast members who were like, yeah, I'm single, I'm in crypto, it's hard out here, dating is hard. Uh, Sure, I I will stream my first date with some random person that you select for me in front of an audience of hundreds of people. Yeah, that sounds like something I'd be down to do. So, you know, this group of like our- Big shout out to the the people who went first. Huge, huge shout out to the people who went first. Like, tremendous. Good good for them. Couldn't be- couldn't be me. I mean, I'm married, so it really couldn't be me, but couldn't be, really couldn't still be, couldn't be me. Definitely couldn't be me either. No, that was amazing that they were willing to, to take that risk. So very, very cool. They were, yeah, honestly, big shout out. Great people. Um, we couldn't have asked for a better cast. Like everyone was like nice, funny, entertaining, you know, engaged. On time. Um, yeah, Brian. 
Did you say something? No, it's like everyone's on time. Oh yeah, everyone was on time. Yeah, that was great too. So that was essentially the format of the show. We had like nine first dates lined up one after another for two weeks straight. These people did not know that they were getting set up for the most part. There was an insider dating scandal, which was also very hilarious. <laughs> side, side note, side tangent. Um, and then we just like literally as the audience watched, had to just like sit through either like really cringy people, clearly not compatible, not driving in any way. Or in some cases they were so successful that, you know, Alex flew Ciara out to San Francisco for their next yeah. date. And they spent a whole weekend. That, was, that episode, that was fantastic. Crazy. Somebody got, somebody got flewed out. Seven, somebody got, got flewed out. out. Now. Yep. Yep. Flew, flewed straight to San Francisco. Flute, indeed. Flown? Flown. Plot? <laughs> that was a great, but that, the energy so, of that episode was a lot of fun. And it was fun to watch um, the switch. Right. There was a moment yes. where, yes. and I had already bet in, I think I had bet yes. And there were, it was mostly no's. And there yeah. was a moment where that shifted. It was the orb. <laughs> and then everyone was all, all of a sudden, everyone was like, okay, he's got an orb. Hold on. Okay. World coin orb. Wait a minute. This changes everything. Wait, was that, was that a good thing? Was that a good thing yeah, or a bad thing? it ended up being a good, a good thing because it was such a, and it was Brian was like, po like poked him basically was like, hey, show her the orb. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you you heard it here first. The world coin orb maximum res. Yeah, hundred percent. That's true. But it we was um, it was really interesting to see that you you really drove a lot of attention. Like there was a lot of um, folks who jumped on and really liked it. So what kind of feedback did you get from those episodes overall? Oh, it was great. I feel like people memed it, which to me is like the ultimate sign of success. If you like create a concept that's memeable, that people want to like jump on board and <laughs> kind of build their own. We got haters. We got some haters. Yeah, we we haters. Haters. yeah haters, haters are always great. That's too. the ultimate. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations yeah, so. on your haters. Yeah. We're operating yeah. on multiple axes of success, if you can't tell. <laughs> like Brian, Brian has to yeah, your next your next <laughs> your next yeah. investor presentation is gonna be pretty funny. It's like here we see our growth of haters over time. <laughs> here we see the number here we see the number of contestants who got flewed out. And no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're really, you're really going on in grace for that little dreamer slip up, yeah. <laughs> so, so that um, was one of, yes that was imp it was impressive so what kind of um so you ended up with a lot more i noticed um for the next thing you're going to do which we need to spill some alpha on that you started mm. to kind of compile some numbers from love on leverage and things like that so where did you end up with that and like how did that change do you think your trajectory Oh, we ended up with, I think, like 10,000 viewers. We hit a max concurrent of like 160, 170 viewers at once on the stream, which I think is like pretty great in terms of like actually getting a critical mass of people all engaging with each other, excited. It like definitely changes the energy of that of that online space. Uh, I think we had like nearly 100 unique bettors that participated actually in using the betting fee. And that was like, totally new to us. We'd also just migrated to base. Like it was a brand new feature that we really hadn't smoothed out the full customer experience for, but people were willing to tolerate it, use it anyway, figure it out, work through some bugs. Um, and I think, yeah, like, and you know, like a couple thousand hours watched, it was like, honestly blew our expectations out of the water. Um, and I think so with that, we've like built some street cred now out there for like being able to put on an entertaining show. So it makes yeah. it easier, definitely, to like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. We like basically. It was incredibly entertaining. It was. It was really entertaining. Like I truly enjoyed it, and I was telling people, like, you got to go watch this. It's really it was, funny. Yeah. It was like, very. It was shareable. really entertaining. Like. Yeah, and they brought it. Like they were very engaging. Um, yeah, and I you know, and people often the guys, the guys really brought it. Like they, they did. You know, the and they all it danced. Was it was great. <laughs> we're you, we're used to being we're used to being the peacock. Okay, we know that we have to show off. And get the lady. <laughs> That's Just, what it was. 
That was what it was. They peacocked well. They peacocked well. But it was, it was a lot, even if you weren't betting, even if you weren't like, even if you weren't into that aspect of it, but that part was kind of fun as well. Um, it was just entertaining, like to watch that and to also, because it was folks from our sort of ecosystem, it was also fun to like, it, it was interesting to hear like the things they talk about because they have this crypto mm -hmm. connection and, and it was just a lot of fun. I really enjoyed yeah. it. I was just going to say, they often say the cliche show don't tell. And I think this is a great example of how you, you guys have implemented this sort of novel mechanism of betting on things that are happening live, but you know, nobody's going to use it unless you show them a fun way to use it. And so I think that's why, I think that's why this hit. And, that, and now hopefully success for you guys is other streamers seeing that and being like, Oh, that's pretty cool. Like maybe we could do this other idea. Literally. I'm trying to figure out what we should bet on in GM Farcaster. I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to figure it yeah. out. Like we gotta, we gotta. Adrian and I have to talk that through and figure out something maybe, to bet on in the morning. Maybe we start doing all of our podcasts on on Lonely, and people have to like bet on on how many how many downloads they'll get. No, I don't know. That's not fun. But we can think of something more fun. fun. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna add a lot of different features. Um, one thing I like is like um, people can like people can like bet or not bet, but like suggest questions they want you to ask and like whichever question gets has the, the most amount of money behind it gets like asked in the podcast or things like that. I don't know. We're still thinking. That's I actually, a good idea, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think like, don't you don't have to force betting in if it doesn't yeah. fit the type of content that you guys are doing. Like, you know, we're, we're, we're just experimenting. We're going to keep trying new things, but uh, I think like, you know, whatever works for you guys and like if, if you don't want to do betting, if you do want to do betting. Like, you know, which cool. which color yeah, noggles will Cody, about it, will like, Cody wear? Yeah, will they be red? Will they be blue? Models, which, um, yeah, yeah we'll have to. If we'll do it, if it's something fun that adds, you know, adds a fun element to it, it's just a yeah. We, we were talking about it, like what could be fun? <laughs> it would be funny. Yeah. Um, and so, Toadie, I don't want to jump ahead, but I definitely want to ask about the Riz Olympics. <laughs> but do I don't it. know if you have something else it. first. So what the do Riz, you have coming? The Riz next? Olympics, sponsored yeah. by Worldcoin. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just the yeah. Oil. Maybe it should be. You want to give there us money? Go. I won't say no. <laughs> there you go. I mean, that's, hey, you've already got the clipboard. I say go for it. Go go through that, that right in front of them. If that comes through, you can just give me a little on the side there. Yeah, we'll give you a little referral fee. I got you. I got you. I'll, I'll send you some Brian, Brian tokens. I got you. <laughs> okay, good. You get Brian token. There you go. So uh, so what's going on with this Riz Olympics and what's the uh, what's the plan here? Yeah, so I don't know. I don't want to reveal too much, Grace, before we start doing stuff. But basically, we want to find who has the most Riz. And Riz is, you know, short for charisma. And so, you know, initially this was going to be something where it's like rizzing up people of specifically the opposite sex or whoever you're attracted to, trying, trying to get laid by. Like with. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Um, really cool. <laughs> Very uncomfortable. Um, but, I, <laughs> but basically what we're gonna do is put people make people live stream themselves going on omegle which is just like random people uh, you know random video calls with people all around the world and we're gonna yeah. have a, we're gonna have a score sheet and there are various things that if you can accomplish you know if you can have the longest conversation with someone that's worth x amount of points if you can get them to say this or something like this, it'll all just like sort of add up these points. So could you imagine if someone, could you imagine if someone falls on like Harry Mack on Omegle? You know who Harry Mack is? He's this like, he's a freestyle rapper and he goes on Omegle on like TikTok. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. That would be cool. That would be hilarious. That would be awesome. Yeah. It's going to be multiplayer. Uh, I think it'll be fun. It'll be over the course of two weeks, but probably like less episodes. We're still figuring out the exact details. Um, I'm not when, do you, when is it going to launch, do you think? What do you think? We're targeting November, November 20th. So yeah. just a few weeks away. Alpha. Exactly. You'll start to hear a lot more <laughs> about it. Um, we're very excited about the show. We have some great participants that are signed up that are honestly very Rizzy people. I could definitely see myself getting Riz. And I think Brian was trying to, he was driving to this point and then he got a little sidetracked. Riz is not about like, it's not a sexual connotation. It's not a purely flirtatious connotation. I think it's just about being like a highly entertaining, engaging and likable individual and being able to like capture that essence. It's charisma. 
it's charisma. charisma. Exactly. So that's what we're out here looking for. It's charisma, and but we're in web it's three. It's us, Tony. We're, it's us. You know, we're in web three and we don't have time for multi-syllabic words, you know? No, we have, really? to, we have to shorten exactly. everything. We have to shorten absolutely everything. Yep. Can't even say yeah. good morning. Can't say good morning. That's yeah, so yeah. It's, the, it, it's it's called the it's called the Olympics. So I'm assuming that this is going to be kind of like nationality based. Like you're going to be representing your your hometown kind of situation. The I think right, the yeah. Olympic element yeah. of it, it it's partially alluding to the tournament style of things. So basically, people are going to go on in like head to head battle, and then the winners of each battle will kind of proceed to the next round. So there will kind of be multiple rounds of the tournament. Um, and then we may have like a, like a representing your background or your nationality or sort of whatever you identify with, we can figure that out and kind of make it a what, more competitive what, element. What, what if it's not nations? What if it's, what if it's network states? What if it's like yeah, someone from Solana, someone, from, someone, from, Solana, someone from Ethereum, really yeah. someone idea. from Pudgy Penguins, someone yes. from Renga, whatever. It, that would right? be really fun. I think that could be, you know, I would love to see that that rep because i think you would get, you'd get some interesting new followers from each of these yes. communities that's actually a really good idea yeah we should do yeah. that it's yeah. so funny <laughs> that you said that i was thinking the same exact thing tody like let's lean into the communities instead but balaji yeah. has a new book coming out called network riz it's going to be <laughs> i'm actually network yeah riz. i'm actually uh in the in the uh in the acknowledgments he, he lists my name uh in, in yeah the, it's there pretty you know. great. Congratulations. Do you guys know any people? Condolences. From... <laughs> Do you guys know any people from the Nouns community who you think would yeah, want to who has who have Riz? Yeah. We know some people. But we'd That's have to see who'd be who'd be willing, but we could they have to be you see who's single. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. If you do someone from Gitcoin, uh, you got to do Azim. He's he's like the most Rizzy guy, so you got to get him. Okay. You know Azim? Azim Khan from Gitcoin. Anyway, he's he's a cool yeah, guy. Lots of Riz, my opinion. Yeah, I'm volunteering him. I'm volunteering him for the Riz Olympics <laughs> right now. I love a good volunteer. <laughs> this is like esports in a whole different way. This is like a whole different yeah. kind of esports. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty interesting. Exactly. Um, yeah, I have to think about that from nouns. I'm thinking of a couple of people, but I just don't know. I don't know if they'd be uh, up for it. But you know, who popped Vicks in my would, head of all people, Vicks, is Vicks would be hilarious. Who? Vicks would be hilarious. I was thinking Onion for some reason. I think he would be great. He's uh, uh, at six. Is. At six on uh, Farcaster. I think he could be fun, but I don't know if he'd. Uh, he's a non though, so I don't know if he'd do it. Um, but I'm just saying, I think that that could be fun. Um, but there's a lot of folks who would be a lot of fun at that. I think this is good. This we'll is, think about this it. Is interesting. I'm excited. I'm excited. Really yeah. And appointment yeah. television. Here we go. By the way, love on it's the also bridge, I would I put it up on my phone and then I shot it up to my TV. So I was like watching it on my big screen. So. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Is there a way for people to watch those past episodes uh, or is it kind of live or Good nothing? Question. Love and for Leverage, love and the, uh... post the full recordings of, um, and then most other streams, it's kind of up to the discretion of the streamer. So if you record it locally, or yeah. we also do record them on the back end, we can access them afterward if we want to, but we've been definitely prioritizing the kind of like FOMO live experience because I don't, I don't like people are not really yep. looking to sit through like a one hour recording of a show, but if they're there, then they're like, oh, this is great. It's like the time flew by. So as we, sure. as we do a one hour recording of the cool. show, well, <laughs> yeah. so if they sit through it, yeah, no, I come think, on, let's uh, bet on something. No, let's <laughs> <laughs> bet on whether I'm people will sit through an hour of this. <laughs> It's in the name, right? It, it's unlonely. And so, like, we're really leaning into not necessarily content consumption. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but we're leaning less into the consumption part of content and more in terms of, like, an experience. Like, if you, a really good live stream is an experience. It is a shared experience that just, like, hits harder than just, like, watching something by yourself from, like, an algorithm or TikTok. Definitely. Or like Definitely. I can say that, like, from my own experience, too. Like, we've been, we've been doing uh, live Twitter spaces for... Uh, a long time now, almost two years uh, within the Nouns ecosystem. And then over the past four to five months, we started doing this podcast as a sort of a shift into video. And I can tell you, like, the like the way that you can relate to people when you're talking to them face-to-face -face is just so much different than 
on Twitter or any other audio only, especially in like this anon or pseudo anon, anon uh, area where, you know, you may not know a person's real name or their identity, but it doesn't matter. At least seeing them face to face, even if they're wearing noggles or whatever, you can just, you can just vibe with people a lot better and you can get to know them a lot better. There's something there. Definitely. Yeah, sure. And I think that that yeah, sure. also happens in the like live stream to viewer relationship. Cause I was going to say like, actually, I don't think Nanish Prop and I, have we had a face-to-face call? I, we may not have, but I feel like I have. No, this is the I, I, think, you I feel like I know you, but no, we haven't. Exactly. This is the first exactly. time we've talked on and video. That's like, yeah. That, that's like a bilateral relationship that you would never get on like a different surface, a different content format where you're just ingesting in kind of a one directional way. And so it's fun. It's like, I'm like, I already knew your voice. I already know your background. I already know you'd wear the glasses yeah. and all. I was like, it's, it's like, it's like, we're already friends. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're totally. Totally. Yeah. And I think, did that, you place uh, your, did you place your bets on whether she would wear noggles or not? Place my bet yeah. You didn't put a lot of bet on the channel now in this prop, so I was unable I know, I to do my money. I should have. I should have oh, put a bet. Prof, missed opportunity. Oh, sorry. Missed opportunity. I didn't even think of it. Um, but that's I think that's time. really, really true. And, and Adrian and I have talked about that connection within Farcaster in particular, but just in general of meeting people only online mm-hmm. and getting to know them and getting to know them better over time. And, and it sort of starts with that. You're just texting and then, you know, maybe you're in a call and then maybe you're in a video chat and then like you meet in person and then it kind of solidifies those relationships. But even people I've never met and may never meet, I still can get to know and have really good relationships and communication with even if they live on the other side of the world. And that to me has been really exciting about web three is that I do have these real genuine friendships with people that I've only known from the internet, you know? And I think that yeah, I would never streaming... have, I would never have this many friends all over the world if it wasn't for web three. I mean, <laughs> no, or, or even you know, this, this many friends, period. Yeah. Just yeah. period. <laughs> totally. And I think that like the streaming definitely gives you that interaction, especially when you have an active chat going and things like that, it can be a lot of fun. It can really change up that dynamic and you start to get to know people and, and really connect with them. And it's fun. It's a lot of fun. I've been loving I'm, it. I'm trying to imagine what a lonely would have been like. So recently our, our nouns esports team, we have a team that's sponsored by nouns to compete in several different esports arenas, but one of them is Dota. And they just mes- recently made a run uh, at the, t- the to the TI tournament, which is like one of the, basically the biggest tournament in Dota. And uh, a lot of us, even who weren't super familiar with Dota, were watching just because it's fun to cheer yeah. on the home team. And yeah. it's hilarious. The chats are just hilarious. Whether you're on oh. Twitch or YouTube, like it's just like so degenerate, so yeah. much copy pasta, so much like shit talking. It's like, imagine something like that with, on on Lonely, where they could like bet yeah. and stuff. Like it'd be off the rails. Have, have you guys <laughs> thought at all about about esports and potential applications? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yes, I have. I love the idea of just like. I think someone already copied us. There's this new, I don't want to give them, but like they, they, you can like bet on like, um, who's going to, if they're going to win this Fortnite match or not, or things like that. Um, right. Yeah. I think that's like interesting. I, uh, yeah, definitely things we're looking into, especially as like Web3 gaming becomes more, uh, as yeah. Web3 gaming matures a little bit. Um, I think it's a little early um, to, it's a little early for Web3 gaming. And so we're trying to figure out our own type of content. Uh, but yeah, definitely we're, we're thinking about it and we're excited. I will say I that, that the Nanzi's... Sirsu, I think Sirsu from Blackhand streams yep. pretty regularly um, yep. nice. while he's gaming. Yeah. We should talk to Sasquatch from Nanz Esports and see if he can line something up with one of their streamers to do a, a stream or two over here just to see how it goes. Like they have uh, Taki, you know, Taki from Brazil. She's a huge streamer. And she's on one of their teams. So it'd be kind of nice. cool if they could get one of their players over over here to give it a try. Nice. Yeah, awesome. It's a great idea, and we should get Sasquatch on the uh, the Riz Olympics. <laughs> Maybe he can be. The oh my god, up. that's a good idea, actually. That's a good that's idea, a really right? Good idea. <laughs> Sass, I'm coming for you. There we go. I'm, I'm nominating or, you. Or Brennan, or Brennan, but I don't know. Brennan's, his Brennan is married, so I'm just not sure what the yeah. lines are here. Do they need guys, to guys, single? It's, not, it's about general charisma. It's about okay, like okay. you can then be Brennan's... married. You can be in a relationship. It's not cheating. I, I, like, I can make a decision for you. Like, if you can convince them to buy a pudgy penguin, then you've got Riz. Yeah. You've got Riz. 
That would be crazy. Oh my God, we need, we need to add that to the rules. If you can convince a random person on a bagel to like buy into your community. Buy your NFT, you win. Yeah, you just buy win. your NFT. Yeah, you, you win. No, I'm just never oh, going to win that. No, I'm just never going to win that one. It's only 20 <laughs> ETH. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. But that's a, that's interesting. I kind of I missed that nuance earlier. So there are no megals. So this time it'll be different because with Love on Leverage there were two crypto nerds, you know, hanging out. But now it's going to be like a crypto nerd versus like a normal a normie. So it's going to be interesting. Yes. We, we should add rules of like if you can onboard people. Oh like yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. If you can onboard you, more, people, you get how getting, many get points if you download on... Farcaster? If they join Farcaster, they get something. If they do, um, That's so yeah. That, if you get them you set up on a wallet, things. a wallet. So yeah. you could probably get a wallet sponsorship if you get if you like put That's one of those rules in there. Like, get add talk, that to the rule. Talk, talk, talk to oh, Mike, De Mike, to oh, Mike Demaray, Mike Demaray. Yeah. Get them on the line. Yeah, guys. There you go. Get a. Rainbow would be good, or Don Wallet. Don Wallet is or super Don Wallet. Uh, scrap, yeah. scrappy. Good. Imagine if you gave like a prize if they actually managed to get someone to download a crypto wallet. That'd be fucking hilarious. It'd be awesome. <laughs> they won't be like able. Of, they won't be able a lot to. Of opportunity but, here. This could be a this lot like of fun. Whole yeah. brainstorming yeah. session. Is this a? <laughs> did this turn into like a, a? When did this become a biz dev meeting? I don't know. I missed <laughs> yeah. that in my calendar. Just, it was always a biz dev. I'm not, it I'm was not, always not. that's the only reason they agreed to do it, Tony. Obviously, for your podcast, no, we're coming here to brainstorm. We're, no, we're uh, playing checkers. We're, we're playing chess. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's just Damn. their plan all along. I feel, I, I feel used. No, <laughs> get, used to it. get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to get like too, too deep in like the technical weeds, but one thing I did want to ask was just about Privy and, and PWA. Um, so, you know, Privy being sort of like the, the abstracted wallet service that you're using and PWA meaning like the apps that, that you can use on your phone without them being full apps. You're sort of taking advantage of both these things. What, what are those, what do you think is the, the upside of those technologies in terms of onboarding people to, to on-chain life? Um, Privy has been great. We like now, if you have an email, they'll make a wallet for you in the back end. PWA is great for sending notifications um, and like letting people do transactions through the through, through mobile without having to pay Apple. Um, yeah, I mean, those are a few things that we did, did relatively quickly. Um, I, I don't think those things are solutions. Like those are like good distribution mechanisms, but they're not going to help us get closer to PMF. And so okay. it's finding this balance of like, you know, the getting distribution and getting enough people, but also like making sure that you don't lose sight of like the actual thing that you're trying to build here versus just like trying to get as many people to come on as soon as possible without having a clear idea of like, do, is this actually like, is there a long lasting business model to, to, to what you do? So. What are they going to do when they get here? If we get them all here. Oh, uh, like an important question to ask. Who? No, I'm I'm saying if we focus just on getting everybody here, but we don't have anything for them to do when they get here, yeah, it's kind of exactly. again, yeah. So it's like a balance. It's a balance. Like I, I think historically I have been very been focused a lot more on just product and like doing cool features and things like that. And I think that's a, a common mistake for first time founders is to not think about distribution as much. I think like these shows that we're doing, we're essentially like turning into a media company, right? These shows that we're launching yeah. have sort of been me and Grace's answer to that in terms of like, okay, like, no, we actually do care about distribution. We actually do care about getting eyeballs. Um, here's our way of doing it. Um, cool. Yeah, I was going to say that earlier that you're kind of turning into a media company, which is interesting. Yeah. Yep. But it's like a means to an end. You're like a means to an end media company in a way. I'm trying to turn into a cash flow positive company. That's what I'm trying yeah. to turn into. Yeah. Well, I mean, it makes, it's not that it makes a lot of sense because if you just leave it up to hopefully people will come and, and stream and hopefully somebody good will bring an audience. You, you can't just like wait on those hopes. So I think making doing it yourself makes a lot more sense. It's not that uncommon either. I mean, look at the competition between, you know, Apple and uh, Prime and uh, all, all of these streaming services that they have to make a lot of like really right. compelling content just to get people to keep paying that subscription every month so i mean it's people come for the content and they maybe stay for the network but you got to get them there in the first place yeah yeah sure, sure. what's the long-term goal here do you think 
Um, I don't know. We're a consumer app. Um, like our strength is how quickly iterate and try things. I think like in the past I've come up with more long-term visions and it's like generally never, it's actually no, not generally, it hasn't, it's never gone the way I've planned. Things always change. You have new ideas. Um, I think, however, like the, the ethos of like every month having a new show that like uses the, a, a new feature that we've built or maybe uses the same feature we've built but just in a, in, in a different way. I think like that is like pretty sustainable actually. Like if, if, if we just turn into like, you know, MMA pay-per-view where it's just like we have these like one events per month that just drive an insane amount of volume, like that's like a, a viable, like that's a viable, you know, path to, to, to a sustainable pay, model. Pay per riz, is that what you're saying? Pay per riz. <laughs> I, I guess like, I mean more in the sense that like these are like highly publicized marketed events that only last like a few hours, but like within whatever like the six hours that is like a boxing match or whatever like there's so much money that is being poured into like betting and all these things and advertising and stuff um so yeah i don't know uh i think uh i don't know grace what, what, what do you think um i don't know i mean i come from the view of the the huge web 2 monopolies and i definitely i don't see us like you know becoming that at all in any way but i would love if in the long-term vision there was like a real web 3 competitor to these monopolies um, and like a real alternative yeah. that does hit a more mainstream user and audience and everything isn't so complicated from the crypto side and, you know, takes like 50 million steps for people to get through and then things break. Um, so there's definitely like a vision of, I think this ethos is something that we really care about. And if we can reach more people with that in like a really sustainable and like organic way, then great. You talked a little bit about uh, iteration just now, Brian, and we did want to ask you about, uh, you know, Code Auditor Gate <laughs> what yeah. happened, uh, a little bit ago. So you, you made a tweet and, uh, okay, I got it here. You said, uh, I'm sorry, but if you're paying 200K for a smart contract engineer, you're NGMA. NGMA. <laughs> we have to ask. <laughs> uh, any Solidity dev should be able to write Solidity with the help of ChatGPT, blah, blah, blah. So th this kind of blew up, it, you know, it became a little, a little thing. Can you talk a little bit about it? Cause I, I actually think it was brilliant, but I want to know a little bit from your side. Um, you know, that was a fun weekend. I think, um, I think, I think you got to think about the incentives so here. Fun. And I think, um, the people who are really mad are all people who make a living off of auditing contracts. Right. So obviously right. if I make a claim that I think auditing is less valuable at certain stages, that's like less money. And then if that becomes something that people agree with, that means less money for these people. Um, yeah. I obviously care about user funds and like want to create a safe app. It's just a, it's just a matter of what do like do we actually have user funds? Like, do we have enough value <laughs> to care about that? You know, and like if every time we if, if every time we launch a new betting feature, I have to pay fifty k for an audit and wait like three weeks for the audit to finish. One, we just don't have enough money for that, right? We have to yeah. pay a lot during the bear market, and two, it just slows us down so much, and so. I'm much more in the can't like, obviously like we will take precautions and like, you know, after all the shit I went through, I'll probably, you know, drop like a few thousand just to get an audit and, and, and say, okay, like, you know, we got an audit, but the truth is like what we're doing is so novel and unique and, and, it, it, you know, you know, just don't put an insane amount of money that you can't afford to lose into this, you know, like we're, we're out here testing. Once we find something that people really seem to like and, and starts getting, we start picking up like significant transaction volume. I'm here for it. I'm here to like, you know, hey, we're making money. A lot of people are using this. A lot of people are putting a ton of money. Let's take the necessary steps to make sure that their money is safe and that our code is audited. But until then, like, I just have like the consumer mindset is just to iterate quickly and just like put shit out. Ship, ship, ship. Obviously, ship. Yeah. this yeah, I think that... translates really well to Twitter and to Twitter beef. So, you know. <laughs> Yeah, Everyone was course. super, super thoughtful and like totally got all of the different perspectives involved. Oh, that's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was really great. I'm glad. Well, the real question is, the real question is, what was the response on Farcaster? Was it better on Farc than it was on Twitter? That's, that's it was a lot nicer. It's a, it's a lot nicer it's than different. Farcaster because people on Farcaster know, have a, like, have a more whole version of like who I am as a person and know that I just love saying like whatever I'm thinking and just like kind of like contrarian out there shit just because I don't know. I just like, I like, I like, I don't like being told what I can. Like uh, can you like to troll a little bit on the internet. I think you're like, your yeah. attitude and your voice is definitely more like that. 
Um, but I also think I that like people on Farcaster do like more thinking for themselves. So, and like they tend, like there's a more contrarian bent to begin with, with the audience on Farcaster. So I think there was a lot more like, yeah, like I probably would never say this out loud, but I agree with you. <laughs> like it was like that kind of vibe. <laughs> Or, or like you said, like the nuance that was missing in Twitter, you probably would yeah, find in yeah. Farcaster more often. Yeah, yeah, yeah I I'm think not, that's fair. I'm not mad. Uh, I uh, like that was a stressful weekend, but also I felt very alive. Um, I like on a very deep level, like stirring shit up. I think it's also just good for yeah. them. Like, I, like there are the there are the people who are like, this is bad, and like no one's gonna want to invest in you, and like shit like that. And then there are like the investors and advisors who are like sick. Keep on going. Keep doing this yeah. shit. Wait, Why? you're gonna ship? Well, you talked about earlier about all these people who took money during the the you know bull market and never did anything. So I mean, you know, v- VCs want scrappy teams that are gonna ship. You know, at least they're shipping. They're actually, gonna right? ship things. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I, I, I had a friend who was like, "You're gonna be unfundable after this." Uh, and then a week later, we got a we got a we got a term sheet from uh, VC. So I was like, "All right, I guess." Wow. <laughs> to be honest, that's a pretty good ENS if you haven't already checked it. Unfundable.eth, I think you should do this. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. It's like, it's like Uncrustables, the Uncrustables of the Web3 world. Those, love those. Love that. That's, really, uh, that's oh one of my, my favorite. Uh, favorite Unfundable. Ones. Middle school uh, I do think there was, um, you know, I think there was, it, I think you made a really good point in terms of the amount, like, yeah, you're not going to spend a crazy amount to audit a very small smart contract. But I do think there was, you know, there's something to at least making sure, you know, that it's done. There are other options that go. Well, it's everything in context. When we make when we make changes to the now protocol, for example, we pay for a pretty expensive audit. But I mean, there's millions of dollars at stake if there's one small mistake. Right. So the stakes are different. It's also about how I present myself on Twitter. I just need to like I was just like like I was like, oh, people are mad. Let's dig into it. (laughs) <laughs> like do that but not when it comes to user funds like that's yes. not something that people like yeah, that so right. just like having a more serious like hey like i like to joke around i'm a troll but i'm actually like i do know what i'm talking about and i do want to protect your money like i do care about my users so yeah. just like also like fixing my tone a little bit that's something that that's an ongoing conversation me and grace have every every every, every <laughs> That sounds like a, a something don't, a sister might comment on. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry though. We'll we'll cut this whole part out in post. We don't want people to think that you're soft. You know, we want you to keep, <laughs> keep your troll image. Yeah, yeah. Here, we'll so keep, keep your something. troll rep. We'll we'll keep keep your let me give you a little tip going. to to put at the beginning of the of the of the podcast. I take back nothing. I stand by what I said. <laughs> I, I don't care about it. I don't. No, actually, no, it's too dangerous. I, <laughs> I love, I love I the love authenticity, that. Brian. I really do. But also, I think, and I've seen this a couple times with you, is your openness to learn and change and be yeah. like, you know what? I said this, but, you know, maybe I, I would do it differently next time. And I think that is really important. You know, we do, we do, it, it, you're going to say things and not think, and it's, and it's, you know, normal. And we all do that. But I think as I said long as, this, you know, you're open to changing it up and, and growing and changing and whatever, I think it's fine. I, think I said this, but my VC says I didn't mean it. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, get, I get a lot of, uh, there have been a few times where my investors were like, delete this tweet. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to think about it. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it's, and yeah, that's, well, that's at least the moment where you go, okay, well, let me review that. <laughs> Uh, review that first that's a sense you, you know we, you, you we tweeted were... after that you tweeted after that brian you said that you found your auditor guy which i thought was hilarious was that a joke or did you really find someone who offered I mean, you for... a lot of free auditing advice yeah yeah you did yeah. <laughs> you did get some auditing go. advice well, yeah, i will it's... say that you know it was i thought it was great that you brought the auditor on to a stream Oh, dude, that guy was I, that guy sucked, dude. That guy was so. And mad. he, it was like it, it, it was crazy. But he, you ended up actually looking good in that situation because he did. I felt overreacted and didn't like have. There was an opportunity for a great conversation there about yeah. the importance wow. of auditing and 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 giving him that audience. And he didn't really take that opportunity, which I thought was unfortunate for him. Yeah. Um, instead of just getting mad and it was like, well, okay, but you had an opportunity here to, to educate and you didn't take it. So that was, yeah. I thought, unfortunate, but I appreciated I mean, that you opened it up to him. So yeah. I mean, cool. he runs an auditing company 
and uh, clearly it's going really well if he's getting <laughs> the streams with me and rage quitting five minutes into them. So, uh, you know, it's a, tough, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a tough market. So I hope uh, everything's doing well. And, yeah. He wishes you. He wishes, wishes condolences. condolences. <laughs> I just think if your company is really killing it, that is the type of behavior that I would expect to see coming onto someone's stream and just rage quitting. That's uh, <laughs> it was. That's it was kind of. It was surprising. I would have to say. I'm that. a bit that surprised was... that you guys haven't quit this stream. I was expecting with your level of success. <laughs> just you drop right now. Gonna rage quit. Yeah. Uh, I'm so, I've done so much. Yeah. I don't know what else you, I know you had a few, did you have any other questions, Tony, that we didn't tackle? Yeah, the only, other, the only other thing I wanted to ask before we uh, call it a day here is I always like to ask people what their view is from outside nouns, because sometimes it's kind of fun to get outside perspectives of, you know, what do people think about nouns, what we're doing? Do you think we're all crazy? Because we are, uh, but yeah, just love to get your sort of perspective on, on nouns, if you have one. Um, I think nouns culturally is like the coolest thing one of the coolest things that's come out of crypto. Um, I still don't really know how you guys pulled it off or how like, the founding team really pulled this off. It doesn't really like, I, so, I, I don't want to, I don't know. Like I'm trying to learn from it and be like, what could I do to get, you know, a fucking treasury to this size? Man, I think, I think it first was, step, uh, first step launch, uh, June yeah. of, uh, sorry, August of 2021. Yeah. Step one. They did a lot of time travel. Step one. <laughs> Yeah, there'll be, there'll be another. There'll be the next round. There'll be the next run. Um, I think. Uh, yeah, I like. There is a ton of uh, money in the pool, and I think it's being used for cool things. Um, I don't know what exactly nouns is though. What I, I I think is like part of the point, but also it's like there's so many different cylinders firing in different directions. Like if you were to ask me, like, what is nouns? That's like a relatively difficult question for me to ask. Also, just full disclosure, like I spent a lot of time working and I surprised, I, I just like, I know a, a surprisingly small amount of like the actual industry and like other things that people are doing. Um, I'm just like very, just like in my own lane. You uh, can't, you can't keep up with everything. Like, Moisturize. Yeah. It's like, it's like when someone offers you to, or asks you to join a new discord and you're just like, I just can't, like I, my bandwidth is full. Uh, no, I couldn't learn about one more thing right now. Or if it's like, oh, I'm launching this new product. Can you retweet this? I'm like, uh, honestly, no. Like, no, sorry, dude. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't, know, I don't know what this is. I don't know who you are. Um, but yeah, that's it. I mean, I think like, like what, so I don't know exactly what it is, but what I do know for sure is like the palpable energy of the people around that. So that is something that is like contagious and very real and like I have felt. So that's cool. Well, like, I think you touched on, like in, in talking about what, wondering what nouns is you kind of did touch on what nouns is to at least to me and other people in the community which is that it is sort of this amorphous headless brand and movement that is that tries to be or tries to see if you could be everything to everyone if you could be a lifestyle brand that does esports and you know also uh you know um co content but also does like um you know, extreme sports and all, all these different things that are sort of all over the place. Can you Movies. fund them all with like a similar, yeah. yeah, like a, a fully animated film, uh, a documentary being made. Uh, yeah, all these different things though to different people. And it's like at its core, it's um, it's an open art project, like an infinite art project is what the founders kind of set it up as. And that's still its ethos, its core ethos. But it's like in doing that, that can be expanded to so many different things, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, the other enough. thing I wanted to, point out too is brian mentioned about like how, how did how did the early team succeed with nouns and i think i made a joke about it being the bull market and that certainly helped but i think the main thing that nouns did is they they were contrarians you know you talked about yeah. yourself being a contrarian and what you guys are doing with unlonely being contrarian i think that's really important because in 2021 everybody was doing like a 10k pfp uh collection you just like shit out whatever you could think of and put it out there and, and meanwhile nouns was like you know what if we just did one every day forever which is like completely antithetical to what, everything that was happening it was yeah. slow growth governance and yeah. i think it, it paid off people saw that it was it was a worthy experiment and uh that's that's what led to their success i think partially so cool. that founding team is just next level too brain wise just major giga brains too that you Definitely. have on that on as the nounders so and artists incredible artists so that helped too the pixel art is insane um so that, grace i wanted to wanted to give you a chance to answer there too i, did, I felt like i might have interrupted you uh adding on to 
Brian's yeah. answer there. I mean, I think I echo a lot of what's been said already. Uh, and I would say, like, uh, for me, the art side of it and the creativity is something that I was really drawn to. Like, the fact that it's kind of, like, infinite iterations of something and it's, like, so simple in concept, but then you can really kind of explore that to the millionth, trillionth, nth degree. Um, and I do I do have yeah. a tiny bit of a little, a little no, it's kind of peeking out of my phone hey. back. Nice. Let's go. <laughs> One of us. One of one us. Of us. <laughs> I also. Have some, I'll give uh, you some that. noggles next time I see you. If either of you are coming yeah, to Art Basel, um, we're doing a whole big day long event. So. What was that, Brian? Were you were you just trying to show us your ass? I don't know what was going on. Uh, I, I, also have a, I, have a, I have a little announce that to you right on the inside of my asshole. Um, I'm not going to show it. I knew it. I knew it. I know the fa I know the face you know, of a guy who's trying to fill you his asshole. <laughs> small grants does pay for tattoos, so yes. if you get That's a noun's uh, tattoo, you can, flow, get it, you can get it reimbursed. There you go. Will Brian do a tattoo of nouns on his ass this live stream? You know, let's see. What's the over under? Now that's a bet. That's you could probably God. you could probably take the other side of that bet and pay for your own tattoo then. <laughs> hey, hey, we, don't we, don't, we, we don't we don't game we don't rig that's uh no no insider no dating insider, no insider trading no more insider trading <laughs> wasn't there an insider dating. dating scandal though what happened there there was uh i've been advised by my lawyers to not speak publicly about this <laughs> i don't believe you have lawyers no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right well I think this is uh, pretty successful as our first uh, live live stream zero pod. It's been super fun. Appreciate you guys uh, both taking the time to to chat with us. Um, and yeah, we're gonna take the recording and we'll put it into the into the can and, and uh, put it out into our normal rotation. So it won't be this coming week because we've got actually DWR is coming up this coming week. So it'll probably be a week okay. from a week from Monday that we'll put it out onto our stream. So we'll let you know once uh, the, once we polish the, it up. We're in the Farcaster you know? zone. We're in the Farcaster right. zone for pods right now. Did you, did you already record Dan's, uh, Dan's podcast? Yeah, it was how, awesome. How, how boring was that? That guy, that guy, that guy. <laughs> You know what? I was he, he, he's pretty he he's pretty entertaining. He was interesting. Ah, but... All right, okay. You gotta be nice. I do, I do right. truly <laughs> enjoy your um yours and Dan's little uh going at it there. It's <laughs> really, really pretty fun. It's, fun. it's pretty fun. It's the fun. trolls. I will tell you one this one story though. One time I had Dan on Twitter Spaces. This is probably like a year ago, and I I said uh, we were talking about Purple Dow. And I said something like, it was my first time ever interacting with Dan in any way. And I was like, I was like, also Purple Dow just nailed it with the art. So good. Like, how did they do that? And it, and it was just silence. Like he didn't, didn't respond at all. Like, oh, okay. Like, is this guy like super serious? Like I can't make a joke. Yeah, <laughs> but, but I will say, I will say that when he came on the podcast, he was very gracious, very, very entertaining and, and fun great. to talk to. So. No, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah, it's we it's fun. Awesome. The green, the mole, the mole um, memes have been enjoyable. I'll just say that has been <laughs> nice. a lot of fun. Um, I saw I saw your comment, Brian. We Especially when Dan got mad. <laughs> he got mad. <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, well, we don't feel it." Did you get all of your Did you get all your warps taken away? <laughs> Oh no. Um, dude, it's not an actual token. I don't care about my warps. Launch a fucking <laughs> token. Holy shit. Launch a token and give me free money. It's not that hard, okay? Like, literally. That's what I want. I don't care about my warps. Here first. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> on that note. Let's great closing great note. Peace. Wait, what, what, what is it? Was there anything in the chat? I haven't been watching because I've been watching. The I've been looking. Side, just so. a few little few comments um nice. mostly just just a little yeah a little everybody just kind of loving loving the noggles nice. and uh and the chat so not not fun. no questions or anything to to add okay cool but it's been fun all right guys thank Sweet. you so much appreciate thank it you, see you later we'll see you, Thanks, see you on everybody. chain all right bye bye, bye guys